Alright, so what we're doing here is welcome to week three. And this is our last week of our study of Mary and Martha. We found out in uh, the last two weeks that these two women, along with their brother Lazarus, were maybe Jesus' best friends outside of his disciples. They lived two miles outside of Jerusalem, and their door was always open for Jesus and his crew. Scripture tells us that on at least three occasions, Jesus came to their house, and we've discussed the first two, and today we will journey into the last of the three. My question for the past two weeks to each of you all, no matter if you're a man or a woman, has been this. Are you a Mary or a Martha? And some of you might say, well, I'm a man. I'm not either. Yeah, you're either. One or the other. Are you a Mary or a Martha? Are you full of servanthood and worry about getting everything in order? Or are you someone who would rather sit at Jesus' feet? These two women were mighty disciples. Make no mistake about it. And they are so mighty, they will forever be known through the reading of His Word. But would you rather be fixing dinner for Jesus or learning at His feet? Would you ha, be the first to say, Jesus, if you had been here? Or would you have waited until He asked for you? Would you serve the food or break open the most expensive thing that you own and pour it on Jesus' feet and then wipe His feet with your hair? Both women were wonderful, spirit-filled followers of Jesus. They just had different desires in their hearts. 102 of us today that have 102 different desires of our hearts. But one of the most important desires of your heart, my brother and my sister, must be learning at Jesus' feet. Amen? And one of the other ones must be, we must be willing to serve wherever we are. Let's talk about both of them today. Let's pray together. God, as every head is bowed and all eyes are closed, we again give you thanks, honor, and glory. Thank you for just allowing us to come together today. Thank you for giving us now clear weather, beautiful weather, that we may worship you, continue to worship you. Thank you for a band that got out and practiced and rocked. Thank you for people that just love singing praises to you. Now, Father, for the next 25 minutes, God, teach us. Please, oh God, teach us. Let us be better after we leave here than we were before we came. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's children said, the hearts of two good women go on display today. Been on display for the past two weeks. One is full of servanthood. Martha's a servant. And she wants everyone to just sit down and be taken care of. Mary, on the other hand, she just acts upon what is ever she feels in her heart. She's a reactionary. She truly is. When Martha objected to Jesus about Mary sitting at his feet and learning from him while she was working in the kitchen, his response was, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary had the ability to be in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. Mary did things when it came to Jesus which were opposite what culture said was right. She didn't care what culture said. And I truly love that about her. She truly did not care. Today, we will again see Mary being with Jesus and doing something which society <laughs> would just shake their heads at. Say that it was wrong back then. But Jesus said it was right. Oh, how he said it was right. If you have your scriptures today, we're going to be in John chapter 12. Get your iPhones out, get your books open. We're going to first start verses 1 through 3, then we'll end up with 4 through 8. John chapter 12. Starting at verse 1, that's where we're going to be. It was windy before the rain came. The rain came, cooled everything down, and now it's muggy, isn't it? John chapter 12, 1 through 3. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived. 
whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Mary is at it again, but this time she was making a statement. If we look at everything that we've talked about the past two weeks, we see that there's no doubt. Last week I said that Mary and Martha were disciples of Jesus. Absolutely no doubt. They truly loved Jesus Christ. They knew that He was the Messiah, the Son of God, and that it is through Him they were saved. They were true disciples. This portion of Scripture takes it up a step. It ratchets it up to another level. Because here, Mary goes into a public profession in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Now, it's a major move on her part. And you might be saying, well, how can you come up with that, Pastor Mark? Hang in there with me. Because there's things that she does that makes it very apparent that she was saying, Jesus is my King. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. And He is my Lord. You see, she did it, number one, for all to see. A public profession of faith is necessary in my humble heart for the growth of a Christian. When we have somebody who accepts Christ at church camp, on a retreat, at a women's event, a men's event, if they accept Christ, they're saved and going to heaven. There's nothing that will ever draw them back from that. However, what we encourage them to do to join the church is to publicly profess their newfound faith. So what do they do? They walk out the next assembly uh, that we have, the next worship service, they walk out to the aisle and come down for it. And they speak with Pastor Anthony or myself or, or somebody else. The thing that is, it is for all to see. And then we celebrate. We celebrate this public profession of faith. We cannot be ashamed of the relationship we have with Jesus. If we are ashamed... Really? All He did for us, dying on the cross? The blood that was shed? The pain, humiliation that Christ endured? He died, for goodness sakes. He was put into a borrowed tomb, and three days later, He rose out of that tomb to be seen by 40 days, during 40 days by over 500 people, and then He rose to the right hand, ascended to the right hand of God. Jesus did all of that. And if we, you, me, accept Christ and then are quiet about it, really? Christ gave His all for us. We need to publicly profess it. We need to never hide it. Citizen Way here last night. And they had t-shirts for sale over here. And I see two of them out there tonight, or this morning. And it just said, Jesus saves, bro. First time I saw that last night, I thought, what? Huh? No, man, it's just like, Jesus saved, man. This is it. He really does. And we need to be shouting it from the mountaintop. Really, why are we here today? Out here? You know, I, I, I would... That's a good question. Are we here just to come out and chill out and be underneath something different? Or are we here to let other people know that Jesus is real, Jesus is love, Jesus is the Savior of the world, and He's eternal. You see, that's why we're here. That's why the band plays, and I love the sound, and it goes up, and it ricochets, and it goes off of that building and into those rooms. There were several people that while they were practicing came down. I went up and talked to them, and they said, well, we're, we got to go. we got to be on the road, but this is awesome what you're doing. That's God speaking. You know what Mary does? Mary, in view of everybody, came with abandon. So let's depict this. They were reclining around the table. Folks, in Jesus' time, and I've taught you and taught you, it's not sitting at the table. There were no chairs like that to eat. It was a low table, and they reclined. 
They had a bunch of pillows and all of that, and they reclined around the table. After the meal was over, Mary took this expensive perfume, broke open the alabaster bar, jar holding it, and poured it on his feet. She came with a band. A band. Really? What does that really, really, really mean in somebody's mind? To come and do something with a band. You're not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's seen. Doesn't matter who's there. Doesn't matter what the situation is. You are all in. Everybody say all in. All in. Say all in. All in. That's what she was. She's all in. She didn't care who was there or what they would say. It didn't matter to her what reaction there would be or how society would handle it. Her motivation was one of pure, unadulterated love for her Lord. Have you ever, in your whole spiritual life, ever done something for Jesus that was out of the ordinary? Have you ever responded to the call of the Holy Spirit to go outside of the box in your worship of Him? Some of you, you're learning, but you're still struggling with the thought process of when we're singing a song, what does this mean? Putting your hand up. For me, it is acknowledging the words in the song at that moment, and I am giving praise to God because of it. Some of you struggle with doing that. You struggle with the thought process of doing something that's outside of the box or outside of being ordinary. God does not want you to be ordinary, my brother, my sister. He wants you to be extraordinary. He wants you to be amazing for Him. He wants you to be all about it. So no matter where or when or who was there, you need to step out of the comfort zone of your box and do whatever God is calling you to do. That's what Mary is doing right now. She came with abandon. She abandoned all of society's norms. She abandoned all of the Jewish culture's customs. She abandoned what any normal woman was supposed to do. You see, Mary heard what Jesus was saying, and she responded. you gotta, you got to believe that in this table setting, in this dinner setting, Jesus is having a blast. The disciples are having joy in it. They are discussing it, and they're talking, and they're laughing. It's like having your family in for Thanksgiving or Christmas. The joy is there. It's, it's ratcheted up a notch, isn't it? It is for us. And we get all around the table and we just have a blast. It's the family together. Here is Jesus with His family. And Mary heard everything that was going on. And she had heard Him speak and teach. Folks, there's only three times that it's reported that Jesus came to the house. I'm going to tell you that in my theology, in my understanding of the relationship of this family and Jesus, there's a whole lot more than three times. Anytime he was around Jerusalem, if he couldn't find a place there, he's going to take a two-mile hike to Bethany and to be at Lazarus' house, at Martha and Mary's house. They had dialogue after dialogue after dialogue. I said it three times in the last two weeks. Great friends were built right there. You see, she knew in her heart of hearts, and she understood, and I'm stepping out on a limb, and I really believe it, that she knew he was going to die. He had told his disciples time and time again, going to Jerusalem to die. And they just didn't get it. I truly believe that she knew, she understood his voice, and maybe, maybe, during their dialogue together, he had told Martha, Mary, and Lazarus what was going to happen. And I truly believe that Mary had the understanding that this was the last time Jesus would be in her house. The very last time. So, if you were back in that day and age, and Jesus was your friend, and you knew that this was the last time He was coming into your house, your house, your house, your house, your house, your house, your house would you not have done something special? Oh my gosh! I would have. I'd have gone downstairs, taken one of my deer heads off of my off the wall, came down and given it to him, put it in his lap. No, I wouldn't have. Goodness gracious. You'd have done something a whole lot more special than that. The last time in, Mary held nothing back. She was absolutely all in. 
And I truly believe that Jesus is always asking us to be all in. We need to do anything and everything Him at all times. Not just on Sundays, not just on home group or youth group nights, but every day. So if we see this public profession of love for Jesus, it's an extravagant act that she performs. And it's out of love and faith. What she did was historic. What she did was amazing. This was not common by any means. This was the first, hold on a second, let me think, the first, and the very last time in Scripture that it occurs. It's the only time mentioned in Scripture that Jesus was anointed with oil and then a woman wiped it off with her hair. All of her hair. Mary did it through her faith in Jesus. She set the bar at a new height. She set the faith bar so high. I just, I would have loved to have seen it. I would have loved to have seen the men all around the table. Thirteen of them around that table. And all of a sudden, she walks in to her room and gets the most expensive thing that they have in the house. And she brings it to his feet. Jesus was reclining like everybody else, but she wiggled in anyway. I love the thought process of Mary. Mary didn't allow anybody to get in her way. She was a tunnel, focus-driven, spirit-filled woman. And when she did that, guess what? It didn't matter. Again, as I said before, when she sat at the feet of Christ and He was teaching, this was a monstrous moment. It was a monstrous moment for them, for her, for Jesus, and now for us. And saying that, what faith Mary had? What strength Mary had? What boldness Mary had? But what love she had? Mary was an open book when it came to Jesus. Her heart was His, not as a man, but as her Savior and Lord. She was devoted to Him and would do anything that He asked. And there were times that she would do things that He didn't even ask to be done, just like the Scripture today. She was a disciple, period. You see, when she took that oil, that perfume, that nard, and she broke open that alabaster jar, and she poured it on His feet, she was consecrating her Master to death and burial. When you hear that word, consecrate, for all of us at Camp Cowan, we go back and think consecration service. And when I try to teach at camp, it's the same thing I teach here. To consecrate means to set apart as holy. Set apart as holy. To move away, to marry, and to us today, what she did at that moment was holy. I believe it was holy. I believe God was pleased. I believe Jesus was smiling. And in view of everyone, she poured that perfume and she wiped her hair by his feet with her hair. And you know what it was really called? An anointing. A ceremony of consecration. Grab Nard was used many times to anoint kings. The perfume was made from a this herb nard from the mountains of India. It was imported in alabaster bottles. This expensive imported item carried such value that people use it for investment purposes, just like we use gold today. Kings would be anointed by the pouring of the perfume over their heads. And she anointed Jesus as her king by pouring it over her, his feet. Mary understands that with Jesus in front of her, the last time before the Passion, nothing could be less wasteful than offering Him a sacramental token of loyalty, understanding, or devotion. Here it was. Pouring this over His feet and then wiping them off with her hair, she was stripping away all that is undesirable and exposing her very self, her very soul to God. This was powerful. She was saying without speaking that Jesus was her King. My question this morning is, 
Who is Jesus to you? Is He your King? Is He your personal King? If so, does anybody else know? Do you speak of it? Do you show it in your actions and reactions? Her love for His honor was specific. A loving act for this specific occasion. An anointing anticipating Jesus' burial and a public declaration of her and Him as the Messiah. Her love for His honor. It's a good example of someone truly being root strong. Root strong has been our theme all year. Talking about throwing the seeds, talking about making our roots, our individual roots, deeper into Jesus. How do we do that? We read God's Word. We pray and communicate with Him. We come to things like worship. We come to things like last night, Jesus was. We fellowship with one another. We serve. We use our spiritual gifts. We do everything that we can. And each step of the way, our roots grow strong. Here was an amazing example of root strong. You see, she gave Jesus her best and he accepted it. Humility at his finest. Folks, this was not a see me and look at me and look what I'm doing moment in her life. This is a picture of humility occurring in front of a room of people. But the two of them at that time, her, she and Jesus were alone. Were alone. Mary's act was not for show. She wasn't the publican praying on the street corner. No, this was a lady who deeply loved Jesus and she was acting from her heart. I have trouble with people doing things in the spiritual world for show. I truly do. Maybe you do too. It turns me off. They do something, you do something, I do something, and it's for Christ. Then let it be for Christ. Let the glory be to Him and to Him only. The man probably gets very tired of me talking about it. But that is God telling me to let them know that He's very proud. What do you do that's selfish for you, but you claim that it's for God? Mary, in this humble moment, a beautiful moment, is a true worshiper. I've been quoting out of the book, Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World by Joanna Weaver. And I have to read this. This was just beautiful. So when Mary broke the bottle and poured the perfume, Mary didn't stop herself to count the cost or calculate how much the ornament was actually needed. She spilled it all out, lavishly, extravagantly, until her treasure ran down over Jesus' feet and soaked into the floor. And Weaver writes this, and then she did something I find disconcerting. She unbound her headpiece and wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. By this act, she laid down her glory and in essence stood naked before the Lord. For in that culture, no proper woman ever let her hair down in public. A woman's hair was her glory, her identity, her ultimate sign of femininity. An in intimate gift meant only for her husband. But for Mary, nothing was too extravagant for Jesus. She was even willing to risk her reputation. Like a lover before her beloved, she made herself vulnerable, fragile, and open for rejection and rebuke. Have you ever thought that far into the culture of what Mary did? Took down her hair in front of them all and took that precious symbol of femininity and wiped the feet feet, not the hands, not the face, but the feet, for crying out loud, the feet of Jesus. If 
If you had the opportunity, would you? Our second portion of Scripture, verse 4, says this, But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Jesus' rebuke, leave her alone. Leave her alone. You know what? I could add to it and I'm going to. Leave her alone. She belongs to me. Be quiet, Judas. You don't understand. He looked at them, all of them, but especially at Judas, and said, leave her alone. She's one of my children, and what she's doing is right. You will always have the poor, but you will not always have me. You know what Jesus is really saying? He's saying, wake up, my brother, and now my sister, and look at me. Look at who I am. Look at what I'm going to do for you. Acknowledge that. And she was. She did. Do you realize that this expensive perfume was a year's wages. A whole year. If we bring it up to 2018, just go with me. Average salary, just go with me. Average salary, $30,000. She would have taken that which was worth $30,000 as an example in 2018. Break it open and pour it on his feet. I want you to grasp what this woman did in the midst of boats going fast, fast. Grasp what this woman did. She broke open everything, the most expensive thing she had, and poured it. On. And Jesus says, leave her alone. She's mine. She understands. She's got it. Jesus wants all of us to see what Mary saw. To do as Mary did. To react as Mary acted. To give all that you have and then some more. A mother once wrote as she put her three-year-old to bed, I love you, Jessica. She said, I'd say as I pulled the comforter up around her chin, I love you, Jessica. And then smoothed her blonde hair from around her face. And a little three-year-old girl would say, I love you more. Big old twinkle in her eye. And thus beginning the favorite game. Mom would say, well, I love you most. Kiss her on the cheek. The little three-year-old Jessica would say, I, I love you the mostest. She'd announce it. She'd fling her arms open wide. And before I could, she'd add the final word, I love you the whole world. Wow. That lady wrote, game over. The whole world? That's pretty huge for a three-year-old. That's love. She loves me more than a birthday present, more than ice cream, more than her favorite dolly, more than a trip to the park. Now that, my brother my sister, is extravagant love. Just like Mary gave to Jesus and Jesus gives to us. Mary, Martha, and you. Jesus in you. That's what it's all about, folks. It truly is. His love for you is the whole world. And much, much, much more. How much do you love Him back? Let's pray.